Some generic work today, which is just uh, UCLA versus UCLA technique, fundamental stuff. Thought they came out with a lot of energy, and uh, tomorrow and Thursday we'll do a little bit of Utah prep, take a couple days uh, to recover, and then come back Sunday, and that'll be like a typical Tuesday for us. So. But they came out this morning and competed. We're on our morning schedule now, which is what we do during school, as you guys all know. So we, uh, we're out here at 7 a.m. and then we bring them back in the afternoon after school is out for meetings. So we come back at 4.30 for some meetings. And uh, it's an adjustment, and I think it's good that we have a bye this week so that they can, they can work their way through the change in the schedule. And, uh, and I think it's a good way for us to practice. So. They seem, to, they seem to enjoy it too, getting to get out here early. We're kind of an early morning team anyway. So it's good work. Uh, the announcement for the football facility came down this morning. Um, how much of a role did you have in kind of creating the wish list for that proposal? Well, I think we're still working on the wish list. Uh, it's going to be really long. Our goal is to make it, you know, one of the top facilities in the country. And I think we have to be really good about looking ahead and looking into the future and, uh, and seeing what types of technology are going to be available to us five years from now and move in that direction. We only get one shot at it. You know, it's not like you can get another shot here in the next 25 years, so we're going to make it as, as, as nice as it can be. And it's for the players. It's for their benefit. Uh, it's to help them improve as players. It's to help in recruiting. It's what we need to do. And uh, we're going to go for it. It's going to be beautiful. How much How are much you already... is it keeping up with the Joneses today? This has become such a thing that's recruiting. Well, it's huge in recruiting. You know, if you don't have facilities, it's hard to attract, attract top talent. Although here, it's not as hard as other places because we're it's 827 a.m. and it's 75 degrees and sunny and I don't see any clouds. And we're in Westwood, California with the beach five miles away on one of the most beautiful campuses on earth. So uh, we always have that going for us. So if we can add a beautiful facility, it's just going to accentuate everything that we already have. But I think there's there's a little bit to that, you know. But I think more than anything, it's about providing our players an environment where they uh, where they have a chance to to reach their potential. You know, good meeting rooms, you know, great weight room, you know, training facilities, and, and uh, everything else we're going to provide for them. So, you know, they work hard. They deserve it. We need it. And uh, I'm just really happy that we're going to be moving forward with it. How much have you already sold at to current recruits um, coming in and stuff? Uh, well, we didn't have anything necessarily concrete. The concept was there that we were, you know, it was in the works once Polly was done and Dan had said, you know, hey, we're going to make a commitment to building a football facility. Uh, you know, we could mention it. We didn't have drawings to show them necessarily. We could show them the area that we we're going to work with. And uh, now we, you know, we're going to be able to move forward with some things that are a little bit more concrete. But once again, you know, what sells UCLA is the football program, the <clears throat> academic uh, uh, excellence of this university, you know, the geographic location, the coaching staff, the administration, the support. And then when you add something like a brand new beautiful football facility, you know, it's going to really, it's going to really be icing on the cake. Is there, is there an ideal date in, in your mind that you'd hope it would be done? Tomorrow. <laughs> if it could be done by tomorrow, we'd be happy. You got a for that yet? Yeah. We're going to go break ground right now. <laughs> the three of us, we've got a pick and a shovel. We're just, we're just, we're just going to start digging and just see what we can get done by the end of the day. No, I don't know. I don't think we, I, I haven't heard that we've set a date yet. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a lot, of, a lot of steps that we have to go through to get it where we want it. But, mm -hmm. I'm sure everyone's working hard on it, so it's exciting. When you first took the job and you saw the facilities here, did, it, did you realize then that it was pretty imperative that there were plans in place for, for a new one? Okay, let me just give you a little history of my facilities, okay? <laughs> when I went to New Orleans, all right, we had these facilities on David Drive that the sauna caught on fire and they burnt down and we brought in trailers and the trailers were a huge upgrade to the facilities that we had, okay? So I've never been one that thought facilities won football games for you. Now, that was pro football, you know, where you get to pick your players. In college football, you pick them, but they've also got to pick you. So facilities do become important. The aesthetics become important. You know, some kids' uniforms are important. Uh, obviously, academics are important. 
uh, winning, having a winning team is important. So I never felt like these facilities were poor because they're functional, you know, and our people around here do a really nice job of keeping them nice. You know, they might not be the nicest, but they always look presentable. So, but it was time and it is time for us to, to upgrade. And I think everybody realized that and I commend Dan for really pushing. I mean, it was not but a few days after Pauly was done when he said, okay, the football facility's next. You know, so there wasn't a lot of lag time. And uh, I think to his credit, you know, he's always trying to do things to help us and to, to make all athletic programs here better. You know, we're limited by space at, on this campus, which is, uh, you know, people could say that's a negative. I don't think it's a negative because our surroundings aren't bad, you know. <laughs> so we're just going to make the best of it. The media workroom part of the... Uh... The media workroom is going to be, it's it's probably going to be the biggest room in the whole building. So. <laughs> and I, I think that they're going to call it the Chris Foster... Not memorial. But maybe. There's <laughs> many that would like it to be memorial. I think. <laughs> Chris Foster press room. How about just some tables for the metal benches out there? Right? We are going to put you guys on folding metal chairs <laughs> and those little desks, those little desk things that you right. in second grade and see if you can fit under there to write. Yeah, no internet access. Ink wells. <laughs> Ink wells. Yeah. No, everything about it's going to be first class. I know that. And it'll be what we need. And, you know, there's a point where you can go overboard, and I don't think we need to go overboard. We just need to provide an environment that uh, that helps our players maximize their potential on the field, off the field. You know, there'll be academic components to it. Uh, I think it's going to be great. It's going to be fun to just see it develop. You guys had your first exposure to the targeting rule on Saturday with that hit on Shaq. How tough is it to kind of strike a balance between wanting to protect your offensive specialists and wanting your defensive guys to play the game? It's a tough rule, but it's the rule. You know, and uh, I think ultimately it's a good rule because it's about player safety. I think it's a tough rule to, to judge as an official. I think it's a tough rule to adhere to as a player when you're playing so fast. You know, it's easy when you watch it on film and they can slow it down and you can, you know, analyze it in slow motion, but things are just happening so fast on the field. Uh, it's something you just got to constantly talk to your players about, and I think you have to drill it. You know, in every tackling drill that you do, you have to talk about lowering the target and keeping the head up. And that's not only for the safety of your opponent, but that's just good tackling mechanics. You know, low to high, face up, see what you hit. I'm a big proponent of player safety. On the bar penalty after that, I mean, do you think there was, I don't know, some thinking from the refs that that was just kind of response to the Shaq thing? I don't know. You'd have to ask them. I, uh, it was a good hit. I think if there was a, if, if what, I, I haven't talked to the official about it. I talked to Tony Parente about it, the director of officials yesterday, and he said that what he saw was that Anthony at the last minute just dipped his head a little bit. And so it gave the impression to the official there you know, who's trying to judge it in real time and, you know, that's tough to do that he dropped his head and hit him with the crown. He really didn't. He hit him with the, the forehead, but it gave the impression that that happened. You know, I, I'm trying to figure out why you wouldn't block Anthony Barr. And then on the next play, you wouldn't block Miles Jack. You know? <laughs> so rather than penalize Anthony Barr for no one blocking him and him at the quarterback, I think we should, you know, we should probably block Anthony Barr. <laughs> you know, he's a pretty good player. With Christian Morris leaving, was that was that just a homesickness thing? I know that's. Uh, you have to ask him. Okay. No, we're just hoping that he uh, finds happiness in his life and has success. Mm -hmm. Has he been officially released for uh, transfer? If he hasn't been, he will be. Yeah, it, it might have been too late in the day yesterday to officially do it, but he knows that he's being released, and if it hasn't been done yet, it, it certainly will be as soon as possible today. I just want these kids, you know. You don't need to turn it into a to a, a, a conflict. It, you know, he, he wanted to go closer to home for whatever reason, and you know, I want him to be happy. So hopefully, he finds happiness, and success. All right. <laughs>